Hi, this week we have robots, FPGAs, LoRa, 3D printing, even more robots, and even more LoRa, and I think there's an SBC in there somewhere. Is that right? It was a bit of a slow start to the year, but we're starting to see some good stuff for the electronics maker. Well, except for things like the Seago, which is another robot scan product that's supposed to look after your pets. Right. Or the Kaya Sunshine robot. Or maybe it's not a scam. I don't know. Anyway, moving on. Kickstarter has finally revved up for the year. The Dexter is a five axis robotic arm that can be trained to do whatever you want with 50 micron repeatability. That sort of accuracy does come at a cost around $2,000, but that's pretty good for what it does. It uses a Zinx FPGA on a board called the Micro Z, which runs Ubuntu Linux on a dual core ARM9 CPU. Nice board. I had to look this one up, as it was the name of my late uncle's electronics importing company. The board runs a Zinx 7000 SOC with 1 gig DDR3 RAM, 128 meg SPI flash, gigabit Ethernet, USB, JTAG, and 100 GPIOs. It's a nice board, and also pretty good for the price. And yet more stuff on robots with the Robot Core, which is designed to connect to a Pi, but communicates over I2C, so you could really use it on anything. Controls 8 servos, dual DC motors, up to 5 amps, 8 10-bit ADCs, 2 Dynamixel servo ports, prototyping area, and a fairly beefy 6 amp buck converter. Runs off 6.4 to 14 volts DC. FPGAs are the future of maker electronics, and this next one is one idea I was going to kickstart, but someone beat me to it. The IO Linker is a small FPGA board running a lattice FPGA called the, oh heck, why can't these FPGA manufacturers call them something short for once? This FPGA comes from the Mark X03 family and has 4,300 LUTs, all lookup tables, and inbuilt SPI, I2C, PWM, timers, counters, and 49 GPIOs. There's also an Arduino shield adapter with level shifting. Then there's this expansion for the Raspberry Pi, which contains 8 12-bit ADCs and DACs, with the ADC capable of 400,000 samples per second, 8 GPIOs and SPI. There's also a small board that you can use to control power to your Pi. It even comes with a remote control. The Fluo Wi-Fi is an Arduino form factor board that contains an Atmega 644P, an Espressive ESP32 along with SD slot. The ESP32 can be programmed over the air or the Atmega programmed via the Arduino ID. It can be powered from 6 to 20 volts. Indiegogo actually has a few things of interest this week. The UARM Swift is another robotic arm. I would have called it something else besides your personal assistant. It sort of makes it sound a little bit dodgy. Anyway, this one is still in prototype stage, but it's certainly a lot cheaper than the Dexter. It can carry up to 500 grams with 200 micron repeatability. You can attach different heads to 3D print or laser edge, and is programmed via Bluetooth using their own software Arduino or Blockly. Looks promising. The Optimus is another 3D printer, but this one claims to be able to laser cut and CNC as well. It can change between Delta 3D print to flatbed format and uses an all steel frame, so it's pretty rugged. It can 3D print up to 240 by 300 millimeters at 50 to 300 microns, or in the flatbed format, it can CNC, laser etch, or cut up to 500 millimeters squared. CrowdSupply has a LimeNet in pre-launch status, which is a complete software-defined radio aimed at higher frequencies between the 2 and 5 GHz ranges. Contains an Intel Core i7-7500 running at 2.7 GHz, 32 GB RAM, 512 GB SSD, and the Lime SDR USB stick. So it's basically a PC in a box with an SDR attached. The Lime SDR USB stick was a previous CrowdSupply campaign that was successfully funded. They're both expensive, but if you're into high-end SDR work, this might be the thing. And over at Hackaday, someone has created a tiny BeagleBone PCB based off the OSD3358 system on package chip. You can order the PCB from OSH Park, but of course you'll need to also purchase all the components and solder up all those pesky BGAs yourself. DigiKey and Arrow Electronics both have the new Artix 530 development kit which contains the Artix 5 system on module, running the quad-core Cortex-A9 at 1.2 GHz and 512 MB RAM, 4 GB EMMC, HDMI, LVDS, MIPI CSI, 
a massive 107 GPIOs, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Zigbee and Gigabit Ethernet. It's a pricey board but you're getting a lot of bang for your buck. So over in Tindy there's not much happening there, but if you're in need of some additional GPIOs then this small board will give you 8 inputs and 8 open collector outputs. Or another version except with 16 open collector outputs. Both boards are stackable on any Pi. And if you don't want to DIY your own LED strip, then the Flickr strip contains a Wi-Fi module, which is probably an ESP8266, and a 3 meter LED strip that you can code up to do anything you want. Over at Seed Studio, there's a Grove Maker Kit that contains a shield for the Intel Jewel, a bunch of sensors, buttons, and flashy things to get you started on IoT stuff. And if you miss the Kickstarter, you can pick up the Lopi from Seed as well which is a tri-protocol module containing LoRa, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. It'll even auto-switch between any of them. Nice module. By the way, I did actually back this on Kickstarter and I still don't have mine yet. I'm sort of a little annoyed that shops can sell it before all the Kickstarter backers get their rewards. But anyway, I'm not going to rant here. We're starting to see some really cool sensors on the market. This one is a high accuracy module that can give you parts per million CO2 readings and parts per billion TVOC which is an acronym for Total Volatile Organic Compound. So in layman's terms, it's the best air quality sensor you can buy at the moment. And if you're into the Intel Edison, then SparkFun have a ding and dent version of their Raspberry Pi block for the Intel Edison. So that means it might not work, but you can get it a whole lot cheaper. And over on the cheap side of town, it's a little quiet this week, but Banggood is busy with an ESP8266 clone similar to last week's Geek Crit and an Arduino clone board running the Atmega 168 with onboard TTL to USB chip. And these 433 MHz ASK transceiver modules are pretty cheap. Runs on 5 volts and are designed for low range wireless connectivity. This looks like a handy little module. It accepts 12 volts in on the primary and also a secondary 12 volt in, which is usually something like a car battery. And it will automatically switch over to the secondary 12 volt line when the primary shuts off. Analog Lamb are into LoRa with another SX1278 based module like the one from last week. But this one has a much better aerial connector. And another version of the one last week in a tiny module. While Ellie Crow have an NRF24L01 Plus module, which has better range than the previous versions, although I think almost every NRF24 module being made this year has this on board. And another competitor to the ESP Monopoly is the MediaTek MT7681, which does pretty much the same thing as the ESP8266. A short while ago I hit a major milestone, which was hitting the 10,000 subscriber mark. And now I'm about to hit 13,000. With all this testing I've been doing this month, I didn't actually follow up with the competition I was going to run. So before I hit another milestone, stay tuned this week where I'll run my 10,000... I think, what is it now? No, uh, it's 12,400. Yeah, where I'll run my 12,400 milestone competition. Thanks for watching, and see you next week.